Cubase templates are the very first thing you see when you load up Cubase. They're part of the Steinberg hub. They're split across different categories. You can easily access your recent projects. I've got recording templates that have come with Steinberg hardware. There's scoring templates, production templates for composing and producing, mastering. And in the more category, we get access to an empty project. So I'm just setting the project location, and now I've got a blank Cubase project in front of me. Now, it's time consuming to constantly be setting up a project for a particular application, and that's where templates are really useful. At the moment, I'm setting myself up with a basic Cubase project, and this is kind of something I would use for a very basic production session with maybe a lead singer. Hypothetically, let's say we're songwriting together and we want to come up with a vocal, some harmonies. We need a few instruments to add some color, probably a bass, and then also a drum track like Groove Agent AC. So I've added my lead vocal, and at the moment I'm adding four harmony channels. I'm also adding a track preset to each one of these four harmony channels, and that way I know it will be in the ballpark in terms of quality. That means that I can plug a microphone in and basically start recording straight away and maybe make a few small changes as I'm recording. I've put all of my vocals into one folder, and that way I can have them packed away when I'm not using them. In terms of what you can save in a template, so far we've added audio tracks, we've put them in a folder, and we've added factory presets to them. Now, they can be your own presets, and don't forget that each one of these audio tracks will also have an input specification which the template will remember. Now I'm just adding some instrument tracks for some light color. So I've added a synth track, I'm adding a bass track, and I'm adding Groove Agent SE, and I've just sped that component of the video up. If you're into using different colors for different tracks, then it's also a great idea to add these into your template for two reasons. First of all, you don't have to do it later, so it's saving you time, and secondly, it gets you used to recognizing a color is representing a particular aspect of your production. That's enough in terms of the vocals and the instrumentation. Now I'm just adding an effects channel. So of course, templates do recall effects channels as they do recall groups and folders. So if I go to my mix window, I can hold down on all of my backing vocals, right mouse click and assign a group channel to the selected tracks. Of course, it's really fast and easy to add things like effects channels and group channels during a session. But having this routine in terms of a template means that you can just sit down and get started, which is also important if you're collaborating with someone else. When I loaded up those factory presets to the harmony channels, in effect, I was adding some Steinberg effects. Now, there's plenty of third-party manufacturers making VST effects. And the neat thing about these templates is you can load up third-party manufacturers' effects and you can also load their presets and they will be recalled every time you recall the template, as long as those plugins are installed on the system that you're using. Different instruments have different volumes, so I'll always have some kind of light limiting during the production stage anyway, especially before I get to that mix stage. So I'm adding the brick wall limiter. You can set up external instruments. You could have a different click track, different levels on the mixer, different time signatures, markers, and so on. You can have anything you would normally have in a Cubase project. It's just now we go File, Save as Template. Now it's just a matter of giving the template a relevant name. If you click on the filter icon in the bottom left-hand corner of the window, you can start to add some attributes to this template that you're saving. I'm not sure how relevant this is to a one or say two user system, but if you're working in a large studio and there's multiple users getting access to these templates, and it probably makes sense to add as many attributes as possible. So there's more definition of the template that you're actually saving. And of course, there'd be a wider use case for these templates as well. Now we're done. So we hit close and I don't even need to save it because I've saved it as a template. And if I go to new project, you can see my simple vocal production template right there. And it's just a matter of selecting create and once again, setting the record destination. And then straight away, we've got the template that we just created. That is super easy. And if I click on things like the folders, you can see all of the tracks are there, the track colors I've copied across, my inserts are all there, and my input and output routings have remained the same. They won't, by the way, stay the same if you're using different hardware. So that's probably the only variable. I use a multi-touch screen control surface in the studio, which takes up a little bit of screen real estate. This template has recalled my window sizing, so I don't need to go and resize it for the control surface. Thanks for stopping by. Please like the video if you've learned something and subscribe to our Cubase channel for more quick tips.